Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about a time series model using decomposition theory, but instead of using a multiplicative model, which we did in the video before this, uh, we're going to do a linear model, so it's kind of like a addition model, right? It's focusing on just adding the parts together, but let's dive on in. So if you remember from last time, the model was going to be y, which is what we're modeling, and that was going to be equal to uh, the trend component times the cyclical component, and I mentioned you might have a seasonal component or sub-seasonal or whatnot, but for simplicity, we weren't going to do that. Um, and then that was just multiplied by whatever the errors or epsilons are from the model. This time, we're going to do an additive model. So it's not technically called an additive model. We'll call it linear regression. And this is going to be y equals um, trend plus cyclicality and then plus some error term. And so we're going to start off with the exact same data that we had in the previous model. Um, I'm going to put an Excel below here. So if you want to actually work along with this or see how the math's done from an Excel perspective, I will give that to you as well. Um, so column A is our time again. We have 1 through 16. 1 through 4 is quarterly data. That's one year. 5 through 8, second year. 9 to 12, third year. And 13 to 16 is going to be the fourth year. Um, y is just some data we've made up that we want to model. It is time series, so it is linked to the time periods on the left-hand side in column A. And so for any time series modeling, the smartest thing to do is just to plot your data. So the first thing here we're going to look at is, yes, this is the same data we had before. It has some sort of trend. So remember, when we do decomposition theory. We can draw a line here, and this is going to be the trend piece. And then if you remember as well, there's kind of like this cyclical pattern that's occurring in the data. And we want to subtract this part out somehow. So in this case, we'll call this C. And then again, the model's not perfect. So we'll always have some sort of error. Um, but again, the little pieces left will just be the errors in the model. Not a big deal. Don't worry about that right now. So let's calculate out the trend component first, just like in the last model that we built. Um, this is going to be done in the exact same manner. So if you guys remember here for doing linear regression, right, the equation for drawing a straight line is going to look something like this, where you have y is equal to a, which is going to be our intercept term, plus b, or beta, which is our coefficient for the slope. And then this is going to be multiplied by something in time series. We'll just call this t for now, which is time. Um, we need to solve for b, and we need to solve for a. If you want step-by-step -step examples and details of how to do all the calculations, please go back to the fourth video on time series with the multiplicative model. We do the exact same exercise here on the exact same data, so you can see how it's done. But just as a quick reminder, B is going to be equal to N, which is the number of time periods, which is 16, times the summation of T times Y, minus the summation of t times the summation of y divided by n times the summation of t squared minus the summation of t and this whole value squared. If you remember from the last video, um, everything down here in uh, row 18, so at the bottom of the tables is just going to be the sum. So you can just use these values quickly to calculate out b um, you are going to get 0 0.961852. If you want to do this even simpler and you don't even want to do the math, if you plot out the data like we were looking at earlier, all you have to do is right click and Excel on the dot. You can hit add trend line. And then when the window comes up, check the box that says like add equation. And you will see um, that your intercept here is going to be 0 0.961852, just like our scenario. Um, to calculate out the intercept, so we want to calculate out A. A is just going to be um, the average value of Y, so your Y column, which in this case is column B over here. And then we're going to subtract B, which we calculated above, which is the 0 0.96 number, and we're going to multiply that by the average of T. And if you do that math, you will get uh, A is equal to 1.078298. And that will actually give you um, column E here, which is your trend column. 
And so you use this equation with your A and your plus your B. So this equation here, plugging in your A and B from above, and then using T uh, from column A, and you actually will calculate out uh, your trend column here. And when we plot that out, you will end up with this chart, and now this blue one is going to be equal to, um, so we'll call this line trend is equal to 1.078, and then whatever, um, plus your beta, which is 0 0.96, you know, the rest of it, times T, uh, will actually give you this line here. And that's our trend component, and we're going to next take our data, our Y data, our actual values here, and we want to detrend them. So we have this new column called detrend, and this is just going to be equal to the Y column over here, um, subtracting out your trend component, and this will give you the detrend, right, the detrended value. This is going to be the same as your cyclical component, right? This is what's left over, and we want to actually model this part, and we'll still have some error on there. But to calculate this detrended column, just take column Y minus the trend column, and this will give you your detrended column. And now we'll plot out these data points, and this is just going to be the detrended leftover data. And you can rewrite this in another way such that y minus your trend is going to be equal to your cyclical component plus e and we want to model the cyclical component um, to model the cyclical component we're going to actually take this new data here and we're going to model it based on quarterly variables so the first column is called time and that's 1 through 16 but those aren't really quarters right those are just tracking which quarter in the sequence we have what we really want to know is which quarters are your first quarter of the year which ones are the second quarter of the year, which ones are the third quarter, and the fourth quarter. This is important in time series because it will always have some story behind it, right? Like, I don't know, maybe if this is sales of milk, maybe milk sells more in the first quarter, and then less in the second quarter, and then less in the third quarter, and then as it gets hot again, right, the cycle goes over and over again. So you would have some type of annual cyclical effect of sales on milk or toys or whatever you're modeling here. But to do this, we just need to create this new column. I'm just going to call it QRT. We're going to refer to this later as Q, but we'll just hold on to that for now. Um, just create this column called 1, 2, 3, 4. And again, as you'll see, um, the 1, 2, 3, 4 just repeats every year to give you your actual quarter number. And then if we plot these out, so we're going to plot these a little differently. Um, in your table here, we're going to plot out the detrended values, which is the same as our cyclical values. We're going to plot these out. Um, so detrended is on the y-axis, and we're going to plot out quarters on the x-axis. But when you do this in Excel, only select um, the first one through four here as your x-axis. We do not want it repeating one to four, one to four, one to four. We just need to select this one time. And if you do so, you'll end up like a chart like this, which is our cycles by quarter. Um, you can see that all of our quarter ones are all grouped together here. And all of our quarter twos are grouped underneath the second quarter, so number two. And then third quarter, and we have fourth quarter. So in the multiplicative model, what we ended up doing was we actually just took the average of these four values for the first quarter, um, for the second quarter, for the third quarter, and for the fourth quarter. And we use that, we just multiplied it by the trend. Uh, we're not going to do that in this case. And also important to note is that the trend in the last one when we detrended, it was your Y value divided by your trend. In this case, it's your Y value minus your trend as we're using a linear model. So what we want to find is some linear relationship between the quarters, one, two, three, and four. So for some reason, I think the quarters are linked together. Um, I want to draw some sort of linear line here. So again, a linear trend, which is why this is called a linear model. Um, and this is going to be called C. And so now to do this, we're going to do the exact same thing we did before when we fit our other linear line. Um, to make the math easy to read and understand, I'm not going to write out like D trend and quarter in full, or even QRT for quarter. Um, so just look here, y is going to be the detrended y value, q is going to represent the quarter value, and we're going to do the exact same linear calculation as before, 
But in this case, our b is going to be equal to n, which again is 16, times the summation of q times y minus the summation of q times the summation of y. And then this is going to be divided by n, again, which is 16, times the summation of q squared minus the summation of q and that value squared. Um, again, you can go down here to the bottom of the table and find that I have all these values summed up. And you can plug these into this equation to get b. You will get negative 0 0.91652. And then in this case, to find out your a, which is gonna be your alpha or your intercept, this is just going to be the average value of y minus um, b or the beta, which we calculated before, and then that times the average value of q. And I should note here that the q values, again, will only be 1 to 4 as they are repetitive based on the year. And when you calculate that out, you'll end up with a is equal to 2.291299. Your cyclical component is going to be equal to 2.29, and I'm just going to abbreviate it and keep it to two decimal places. But for mathematical reasons, you should keep all the decimal places for better accuracy. Um, and this is going to be plus your b, which again here is negative 0 0.09. Um, and we'll round that to 0 0.92. And that's going to be multiplied by your q or your quarter column. Um, something just to note here, since this is a negative value, the line will have a negative slope. And if we actually look at the chart now, so that equation we just drew out here, uh, this is your C, and that's just going to be the equation before, which was that 2.29 um, plus negative 0 0.92 times Q or your quarters, which is just going to be one, two, three, four. Um, you'll end up with this plot. And just to point out here, right, if you look at the charts, look at the y value, um, this point is going to be one point something, so say 1.3. Um, this point where the blue line intersects at two, this should be somewhere around like 0 0.5, where three intersects. Our new line will be like negative 0 0.5. And then this one will be somewhere around negative 1.5 itself. And when we go back and do the calculations here, you'll find out when looking at this quarter minus trend column is that we actually end up with values similar to what I was saying. So for quarter one, we have 1.374796. Anyways, and then quarter two is 0 0.45. That was close to the 0 0.5 I mentioned. Uh, this one's negative 0 0.45. Four, six, depending on how you look at that. Um, and then again, this last one is negative 1.37. Um, you'll notice though that we only have four values here, okay? There's only four unique values. And if you update the table, you will see that I just copy these four values based on their quarters all the way down. So 1.37 was the first quarter, it's repeated here. And you repeat the second, third, and fourth quarter. So basically, this is the unique block for the second year, and then it repeats again, and you can cut this off into the third year, and then this last block is going to be the fourth year. And now we have finished the C, or the cyclical component, and all we need to do to do the final prediction, which is going to be this P column here, is we're just gonna say P is equal to uh, the trend component, which is going to be your trend column um, plus your cyclical component here, which is going to be your quarter trend, which you could just relabel that as C if you wanted to to make it easier to read. And this is going to give you um, your final column P as I mentioned. So if you just add these columns together, you'll get P. Mathematically speaking, uh, you would have Y is equal to your trend plus your cyclical component. And then we have, again, some error in the model. But let's just plot these out real quick. So if we go back and we look at the original plot, right, these are the original y values. Again, it looks like there's some type of linear trend here. And we took this out, we subtracted t, 
And then we went back and said, okay, there does look to be um, some type of cyclical pattern here. Um, I think it's based on quarters. And so we're going to model this with a linear relationship um, between the quarters and um, the values of Y that had the trend taken out. And what that ends up getting you is that prediction we were looking at here. Um, these are our predictions P. It looks kind of odd, right? You kind of have like a linear piece and it kind of steppers up. And so it seems kind of weird, but if you actually plot these against the actual data, so now we have Y, the red dot is our actual data, and we have P as our prediction value, you will see it's closer than it actually looks when you draw it out just by itself. But the real question we're gonna have is, should you use the multiplicative model or should you use the linear model? The answer to that question, we're not gonna cover in this video, but we're gonna cover it in a the next video, so the next future video, because there's really interesting reasons on why you would use one over the other. Neither model is superior, there's just different applications for each. So don't forget to subscribe below by hitting the subscription button, hit the little bell button next to it, and that will give you the weekly notifications when new videos come out. And then in the future videos, we will discuss um, which model is best for what different purposes. And then we'll also discuss other aspects of time series as we're going deeper and deeper and deeper, um, kind of down this rabbit hole of time series as a topic in general. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.